Hello, good evening. You're welcome to Online Helium Crusade. I'm so glad to welcome you and thank you for joining us. We believe the Lord has brought you for this crusade. And um, uh, you can also join us tomorrow. The time is 6 p.m. GMT plus one. Uh, the servant of the Lord is ready. God has loaded him. I believe through this forum, God is going to be speaking to you and giving you answers. You know, a problem, a problem remains a problem until the word of God comes. A challenge remains a challenge until the word of God comes for it. And that word of God will bring solution. Uh, uh, something, uh, 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 something re retains its name, as long as we can see it. Retains its name, a challenge, a problem, an issue, retains its name until the word of God has come concerning that. And when the word of God comes, I tell you the power of God is on the stage. And that power will go and solve the issue. So tonight, I welcome you in the name of Jesus to where the word of the Lord will be coming your way. I know it's not by accident that you are here. God actually brought you. God knows you're going to be here. Because God gave his servant the word. And he brought the people that will need that word. And so you are one of them. You're welcome. So join me tonight to welcome the servants of the Lord. Evangelist, we will be you with As he brings the word of life unto us again. In the name of Jesus. Stay tuned. And God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the opportunity to bring you the word of life today. Uh, it's a privilege to do that every time we come up. And today is Sunday. And so we minister every Sunday on something like minister's stuff, you know. Uh, so that um, if we have a crusade on ground, there's always some time specially meant for ministers of God to receive a word of encouragement and then be lifted up. You understand me? So <clears throat> today's ministration will be for ministers of the gospel. Okay? And I pray that you get your blessing from that in the name of Jesus. Praise God. All right. So let me get you the scripture that we want to use for today. Mark chapter 1 verse 41. Mark chapter 1 verse 41. I just want to kick start with one of the scriptures. The Bible says there, And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and said unto him, I will, so be thou clean. And as soon as his heart had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and was cleansed. And he straightly charged him, forthwith, and sent him away, and uh, said unto him, See that thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer for the cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out, and began to publish it much and place it abroad. Uh, the matter in so much that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without the desert places, and they come to him from every quarter. Praise God. So one of the things that um, we see in the life of Jesus is that he does not only minister in the synagogue, which is the main churches of the day, there was a time that he started ministering outside of the confines of the synagogue or temple, but ministering at the open place, maybe like at, or an open field, or maybe around the um, um, seashore. That's what we call the beach, or at times on a rock, and then people are going to sit all around the rock, open air, and he'll be talking to them and ministering to them. So his ministration was not only in the church. Okay, and um, there are a lot of other things that we can learn from the ministry of Jesus. But I'd like to just keep giving you the basic things that will enlarge the capacity of your church and make the work of God uh, really come out big and great in your hand. And I pray that you pick it that way in Jesus' name. Let's look at the Acts of the Apostles because they are the ones that we can take after them. They are the ones that um, have uh, 
gone ahead of us in this road. Act of the Apostles chapter 19 verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was still at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast, he came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as said whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John baptism. Then said Paul, John greatly baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hand upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they speak with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And they went to the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. And when divers were hardened and believed not, but speak evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one tyrannous. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia had the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul, so that from his body we are brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or apron, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirit went out of them. But then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirit, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of one Skepha, a Jew and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was lived on them, and overcame them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house, naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also that are dwelling in Ephesus. And the fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and, and bound them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Praise God. Now, that's from verse 1 to 20. One of the things that is a major thing that God uses to expand his kingdom and to do the work of God on earth is the power of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus Christ was here for 30 years, he lived, but he did not venture into ministry or into the work of God, despite the fact that he knew that that's what he came for. He came that he may die on the cross of Calvary. He came that he may take away our sins. He came that he may shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. But he has not done anything along that line. He was just like an apprentice under his father, Joseph, physical father. And then um, after a time, people knew him to be Jesus Christ, the carpenter boy. Later he became Jesus the carpenter or the son of carpenter, whatever they like to call him then. Uh, but at age 30, he moved he took a step of faith in the right direction and went to John the Baptist for water baptism. And after the water baptism, the Bible says that the Spirit of God descended on him like a dove, and the dove did not leave him. The Spirit entered into him and made him to become another person. And the Spirit started controlling him from that point. The Spirit led him. first leading of the Holy Ghost was to lead him to go and pray in the wilderness and did that for 40 days and 40 nights without returning back home. So Mary will be looking for him, all his other brethren will be looking for him, but he has gone into one bush somewhere to be praying and fasting and praying with the new Holy Ghost baptism he has received because he received both water baptism and Holy Ghost baptism together the same day. So he went somewhere to pray and to fast and to keep on praying and fasting, keep on praying and fasting for 40 days. He ate no food for 40 days and 40 nights. That was the beginning of his ministry. 
So as a servant of God, I challenge you. You need the power of God to be able to do the work of God. You don't need only um, your certificate as theology expert or somebody who can talk Bible. This, this, doing the work of God is not religious knowledge. Are you getting what I'm saying? If, if somebody can be a professor of Bible knowledge, you know, and study some things in the Old Testament or have another degree in the New Testament or something, but if he's not anointed for the work, he will not be able to heal a man. He will not be able to pray for anybody for anything to happen. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, but Jesus they didn't go on that line. Jesus went on that line, on the line of, I need power to do the work of God. And after he has received water baptism and Holy Ghost baptism together, he went further to still pray further with the tongue, with the, with the new tongue or the Spirit of God that came upon him. You know, he announced that to us in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That's after he has gone for that 40 days and 40 nights prayer and fasting. He came back with that. And what happened after? He was able to now minister to people. He said, this thing that I'm reading to you from Isaiah 61, it's not going to be ordinary. It's going to be fulfilled in your ears today and in your eyes today. And you will see it happening. What? That what the Spirit of God upon a man can do. You will see it happening just now. And he started ministering. And people were healed. People were surprised. Is this not John? I mean, is this not Jesus, the son of the carpenter and Joseph? As his brothers not here with us, where did he get this kind of power? Well, you have forgotten that he has stayed with Judaism for 30 years. He has learned the law. Of Moses and much more. He has been following the word. But when it comes to the time for him to be empowered for the work, he went for water baptism under John. And beyond that, he received Holy Ghost baptism. And then he now did fasting and prayer in addition to that. Are you getting what I'm saying? Then something burst out from inside of him. The power of God started manifesting. And uh, he was able to use that power to help a lot of people. He was known to be a healer. Healing all that are oppressed of the devil. He was healing north, south, east, west. He was healing everywhere. You understand what I'm saying? But what led to that was that initial praying of the Spirit, baptism of the Holy Ghost. So I believe that the same thing is going to happen to any minister of God that can dedicate himself to God. And uh, without any compromise on the word of God, and the power of God will be released unto you. And your life will never remain the same. You know, he told these people, he said, until you are endued with power from on high, don't go and witness for me. That means he didn't say until you have enough degree of theology, you should not go and be a priest for me. So until you are endued with power from on high. So we need something more than theological theory. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm not berating that. I'm not saying it's not good. It's good. We can't we can lead the people without having adequate knowledge of the word of God. But beyond the knowledge, we need the power. Are you getting what I'm saying? Look at what we read concerning um, Ephesian church. After water baptism, they moved into the realm of Holy Ghost baptism when Paul ministered to them. And how many were they? Just 12. But that 12, when they kept on praying, praying in the Spirit, when they kept on witnessing, witnessing to people one by one, two by two, going to uh, houses, house by house. I mean, are you getting what I'm saying? Before you know it, the Bible says the whole of Ephesus had the word of God. The whole of Asia had the word of God. Asia is not a street. Asia is not a town. Asia is not just one city. Asia is a continent. But under two years of consistent praying in the spirit and consistent ministering to people, the Bible said it was teaching people in the house of one, in the school of one Tyrannus. When he did it in Amplified Bible, he said not only was he teaching and preaching, he said he was doing it for from the hour of 11 a.m. in the morning to 4 p.m. in the night. That's five hours. I'll get to say five hours of teaching people. Not like today we have 50 minutes service and then second second batch of people will come in and then third batch will come in. No, it was using five hours to teach the word of God. What was the result? The Bible says some miracles started happening that even people touching this clothes or people they send a catching to, they are getting healed. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ became so well known among the people because they use that name in casting out devil, they use that name in getting baptism, they use that name for most of the things that they do. Lay hand on the sick in their name, cast out devil in their name, speak in tongues in their name, everything. They do communion service in their name. You understand what I'm saying? So, some people now came, sons of Scaphar, 
a high priest. That means people with the order of Aaron as high priest. His sons, seven of his sons, two came out. They want to go and do like Paul and his people used to do. And they saw somebody with evil spirit say, Yes, we want to cast you out in the name of Jesus, the kind of name of Jesus that Paul is preaching. They were not born again. Neither did they have Holy Spirit power. But they had what Paul used to do and his people used to do. So they copied it. The same thing is happening today. A lot of people want to copy out what the Pentecostals are doing. But they can't. If you don't have the power, you don't have the power. And if you, you better go to God for help than to leave that and begin to go to the devil to empower you so that your church can be big or something. With the devil you go to to collect power, how will he be able to cast out evil spirit from other people when it's the same devil that gives them the evil spirit? So you can't work with the devil and gain souls for God in the kingdom. You will be, whatever people you, that come to you, you will be taking them to hell where you are going. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because you can't be walking the work of God with the evil spirit power of the devil. Can, can, can that happen? Can you use devil to serve God? It's not possible. You understand what I'm saying? But today, I, I want to challenge every man of God, every person that wants to serve God. Let's do it the right way. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is a way that leads to destruction. That's a way that is a narrow road, but it will give you the best at the end. No devil will be able to say, I made you, that I'm the one that makes you to be what you are. If you didn't come to me and I give you power, how will you have been able to have a big church? You know, if, if you have collected something from them, they can do that to you. And not only that in the physical here, what about when the man dies and gets to heaven? Who are you going to report the number of people in your church to? Is it God? Or was it God that brought them? Or the juju you went to do or the evil spirit power you used? So who is deceiving who? And we're getting to the end of this now. Jesus Christ will soon come. All these things must come to an end. So that the people that are really serving God, authentic, original, will see them. And the difference will be clear. Because people will know those who are right and those who are wrong. I get what I'm saying. But I pray that you won't miss it, you won't mess it, and you will not mix it up in the name of Jesus. You will not fail, you will not fall, you will not falter in the name of Jesus. And if you have done anything that is contrary, to the one that is stipulated in the Bible, you can always retrace your step. And God will definitely take you in, in the name of Jesus. The Spirit of God will welcome you and God will advance you into a greater level. I want to pray with you, whatever is your sickness or disease today, anyone, uh, particularly before I came up tonight, uh, I knew that somebody was having a kind of eye problem, the right eye. I'm going to pray for you and God is going to heal you. Uh, and then also there's someone that's having frontal headache. Like headache that is only around the frontal part. The other part is okay, but the frontal part like this. Having headache there. The Lord is healing you also in the name of Jesus. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, whosoever is having that eye problem, I rebuke you, you spirit of infirmity in the eyes, whether it is glaucoma or whatever kind of cataract, I command you to lose your grip and get out of that place in the name of Jesus. Bible says you hear my voice and fade away from your hiding places. Wherever you are hiding sickness, disease, and infirmity in the body, I command them to disappear in the name of Jesus. And that person that is having frontal headache, I command that headache to leave you now in the name of Jesus and peace of God to come upon you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's a daily affair. Until tomorrow, be healthy, wealthy, and strong. Praise God.